Hi everyone, Niall here. Welcome back to the 8020 BIM channel. Today we're going to talk about design options and how we can leverage them to easily represent multiple design options to a client so that they can be better informed in their decision making. Um, historically what you would have is multiple files representing each design option. So let's say in the CAD environment you would have three or four drawings or three or four um, files that would have each design option you would print them out, you present them to the client, the client would decide. The great thing about Revit is you can do this all within the single environment. And it functions in a very similar way as phasing without the actual time element appended to it. So we're quickly gonna go through the dialogue here, how to set it up and how to finally nominate the decided design option once we've made our changes. So to begin with, before we actually start making any changes to suit any proposed design options, we actually have to set up all the design options ahead of time. So we do this by going into our manage dialog and going to design options here on top. And as you can see, our design options tab here is empty, right? So what we need to do first is enter a new option set. So when we press new, we get our option set one, right? And we have option one within our option set one. Okay, so we're going to rename this and we're going to call these full height windows. And then within the same option set, we're going to add an additional option and we're going to call it half height windows. So these are our two options that we've now entered into our option set one. Okay. So once we've done this, we can close this dialog down. Now, in this instance, our client is concerned about the full height windows that we have on the first floor here. They think it might be a bit of a, uh, a privacy issue. So they want to actually see a comparison between the full height window and a proposed half height window instead. So we want to provide them with this and we don't want to have to go and duplicate out a file just to represent this one small change. So what we can do is we can select the windows in question and then we can add them to our set. So we can do this by going down to this dialog here, add to set, or we can go to our manage tab and under design options, we can say add to set up here. Now, it'll give us our option set to select from. As we only have one in this project, we can select option set one, and then we can select our full height and our half height windows. Now, what we want to do is we want to create a variation of what we have here as our second design option for our half height window. So we actually want to add both of them, add to both of them so that we can make a change in the second one and the first one can remain stationary as it is. But you'll see here when we press okay, we get this inescapable error here. And this is because our windows are hosted within the wall. And we cannot tell our windows to go to a design option set without the actual host element, in this case, the wall also being set to the same design option set. So in order to make changes and have the variables and design options, both our windows and the hosting elements, aka the wall, have to be set to our design options. So I'm just going to press control here and select all the options here. And I'm just going to go down and include the window and our hosted wall down here as well, just to make sure that we don't get any other errors. And we're going to go down Add to set, we're going to make sure the both are selected and we're going to press OK. Now we're going to get some uh, join issues here and that's because we have two variables now in the same position. So we're going to get unjoining. Um, it doesn't matter, we can just ignore this warning because when we actually decide our final design option, that warning will be rectified, okay? So we can press unjoin elements here. So you'll see now that we still have the same presentation of our whole model, but when we go down to our design options, we can actually select each of the design option sets now. And what you see is everything except the items assigned to that set are now grayed out. So we can actually click and drag over everything and only actually end up selecting the objects within the design set. Similarly, we can go down to our half height windows and do the same. Now, as you can see, there's no variation here because we haven't made the change. So while we're in the half height windows design option set, we need to make the edits so that we can see our second design. So we're going to select our single windows. We're going to move them down to our half height variation. 
Um, these are actually sized by instance in this case, so we're going to change the height to 1350 and then we're going to bring the head height back up to our 2700. And we're going to press apply. And now you can see that we've made the alterations that the client had requested to see within our second design option set under half height windows. We can then go back to our full height windows and still see the original design option set. Now, when we go back to our main model, you can see that we remain on our first design option. And the reason for that is when we go into our design options, you will see under full height windows, they're set as primary. So if we, let's say, want to see the second design option as our primary um, layout for the client, we can go in and simply under the option here, make primary. We'll get an ignorable warning here. We can just unjoin the button and press close. And as you can see under our main model now, you'll see this as our primary design option. And then we can go to our design option one and our design option two to see the variables. Now, so that's brilliant. That's how we actually create our design options to begin with. But what is often left out from these type of tutorials is how to actually assign the final decided upon design option. So we actually prefer, in this instance, the client actually preferred the aesthetic of the full height windows. So we're going to actually remain with the existing design option one. Okay. So we're going to select our full height windows here under design options. And you'll see that this is all frozen out. And the reason this is frozen out is because I'm still actually under the half height windows design option two dialog visibility. So we can't actually edit anything within this. So we actually need to go back to our main model to then assign which design option set we are happy with. So when we go into our design options dialog, we can go down to our full height windows. We're going to make primary. We're going to unjoin our elements. And now that's set as primary under our option set, we can press accept primary. This will give us a warning saying that this will delete the secondary options that we created, aka the half height window um, design option set. And are we sure that we want to do this in case, because this case the client has opted to go for the full height window. So we're going to say yes. And as you can see, we have lost all of our design options dialog now because we've actually decided upon our final design option for the client. We can then close that and you'll see that this whole dialog down here is frozen out because we no longer have any design options present. So that's a quick overview of how we can actually leverage design options to better represent variables for the client and inform their decision making without actually creating multiple models um, just to illustrate very simple changes. This works really well when you have internal layouts that need to um, you may want to create internal partitions to represent space, spaces in different layouts or if you have multiple types of maybe an extension that you want to present to the client from the aesthetic perspective you can have a b c d d of our extension options to the client and then once the client decides you can just tell them to accept you can just tell the revit file to accept whichever one you nominated as primary and then that becomes the main model going forward so that was a very quick tutorial on design options. If you like this tutorial, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave any comments that you have down below and we'll make sure to get back to you and make sure to tune into our channel for the next one. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye.